Welcome to Gear Talk. I'm Brooke. And this is Annie. And we are joined here today with the Low Tide Boys. Hello, fellas. Hi. Hey, thanks for having us. <laughs> you are more than welcome. Um, you today's are on episode. The couch. Welcome. <laughs> yes, you're invited back. <laughs> on today's episode of Gear Talk, we are taking a deep dive into the Vivo Barefoot Tempest by, as you may have guessed, turning the tables and interviewing the Low Tide Boys on their recent experience training in the newest, and I'm going to take a gander at maybe the only swim run specific shoe to hit the market. And so this shoe by Vivo Barefoot, the Tempest, is is claimed by the company also to be the best swim run shoe on the planet. We'll be the judge of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, before that, though, does anybody have any updates on previous gear that they've tried that they want to update kind of their review or if they have a new experience they want to share with anybody? Chris segued it to himself. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you have and two. now, Chris. Do I have two? You have the Solomon Amphibs. Oh, yes. And then uh, and then a first impressions report. Go ahead. Take it away. When we did the shoe down episode, one of the shoes that we mentioned were the Solomon Amphibs, uh, the regular ones and the S-Labs. And I had a pair of the regular ones that were just sitting in a box in my office. And I busted them out for the swim run that we did that was the Engadin three-hour team on will repeat swim run. Yeah. I really like them. For, for like an urban training, it was great because it's basically just like a regular running shoe and you're running, you're not running on trails. You're not really worried about traction. So yeah, actually, I've been using those pretty much every week since, which has been like four weeks, three, four nice. weeks or something. And Are yeah, they your new favorite shoe? They're my new favorite shoe for running in the city. If I'm doing like an urban swim run training. Urban swim run. Okay, so like a boss, the Boston Harbor swim run, if that would ever come yeah, back. Yeah, sure, or... sure. Or, or even or even just for training. Yeah, I think for a race, I would, I'd want something more trail focused for, for whatever the yeah. course kind of has to bring. But yeah, for training in the city, I mean, I was really pleasantly surprised. They drain awesome. They fit well. Are all your training swim runs in the city? They have been lately just because tides out here have been funny. So, uh, what are your transitions like? What's the terrain like? Is it like docks or beaches? It's a beach. Hmm. It's pretty nice. Like yeah, just it's a, a nice beach. Yeah, beach. Nice smooth. But yeah, beach. but no worries about sand or anything. So, so yeah. Just yeah, want to cool. let people know that if you're sort of training in some urban setting, do you happen you? to know the price point offhand on those? Um, oh, I don't. I can look it up. Um, Hundred bucks, maybe. No, I would say they're probably like one forty, right? I think that might be the S lab one. While Chipper's doing that, I will give an update to our pretty stellar review of the Orno, the Arc Orno wetsuit last right. episode. Mm-hmm. And I will say that I, true to form and consistent with the pattern, have another hole in the wetsuit. Oh, no. Whereabouts? Oh, no. Which I have fixed with Aqua Seal. It's, it's in the uh, kind of in the armpit. Okay. Now, That's kind of a problem area. It's becoming a problem area. Okay. And and are you trying to nip these in the bud? Like if you see like a little crack yeah. starting, are you seeing yeah. it Yeah. And then? so when I say there's another Pretty hole, seal. it's not like you can, there's, it's not like there's a gaping gash. Right. You like can you can't see put my your finger through. through it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that well, that that's good to know. I mean, it's nice that the contact cement is working, but it's also problematic that the suit it's isn't a race that suit. old. Yeah. It's a race suit. Totally. Race suit. I haven't done a single race in it. No, I did. I did the one race in it. Yeah. And I've done a ton of training in it. So yeah. I think I, I'm getting what's coming to me. But that, yeah. Annie, you also discovered a new shoe as well. Yeah. So this would maybe be in the first impressions category. Cause I I don't know though. I've actually done quite a lot in it. So this is an amazing story about how I discovered this shoe. So we had literally just recorded the shoe down episode, and uh, my spouse and I were traveling. And we were we actually did a swim run in the desert in central Washington, um, where there there were some bodies of water. But after the swim run, we were in a local gear shop 
that is geared toward rock climbing because that's kind of the primary sport in the area. We were in the Meadow Valley and um, Brent was fulfilling his duties as the mayor of swim run to all of the people. <laughs> and he was just like chatting about what we'd done with our day to the gear shop employees. And this, this guy who was a total climber said, well, I never heard of swim run, but I think I have the perfect shoe for it. And Whoa. I was like, and you're like, Go Whoa, on. <laughs> yeah. Go on, tell, Care, me more. tell me more. <laughs> and so I, 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 I was a doubter. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I'm in a rock climbing shop. So he walked over to the shoes and he pulled off this Arcteryx trail runner, which is kind of designed as a lightweight um, trail run approach shoe. Um, and it's called the Arcteryx Norvan SL. SL stands for super light and it is super light. And so he did pull it off the shelf and I was like, well, sir, that looks like the perfect shoe for swim run. It's got um, like mesh. It's not made of any absorbent materials, it's super lightweight. And it's now my tentatively favorite swim run shoe. Wow. Very interesting. Um, so Arcteryx, that's a pretty high price point. Were these like on sale or did you pay for um, the retail? For so the things? ones I got were, I think, in unpopular color and they... Mm-hmm. I think they run for one. They're one fifty on their site. One fifty. Right yep. And I got mine for eighty nine. Oh, nice. That's a Dang. good deal. That's a yeah. deal. <clears throat> and just to close the loop on the Amphibs, it appears at least on Solomon's site, they're only making the Amphibs in the S Labs version now. Okay. Which the S Labs version will run you one eighty. But if you, depending on your size, the exact ones that Chris has are just called the XA Amphib Trail Running Shoe. Amazon has them right now for ninety five bucks. So if you if you act quickly <laughs> and you have a size seven, seven and a half, eight, or ten and a half, meaning we're gonna all act quickly before yeah. this goes to air, <laughs> then you can you can score some of those. And I will say, Annie, that the Arteryx shoe looks very similar to the Solomon and Fib. So I see why totally. you would like it. Yeah. yeah, and it's I it's better though because it has traction. Right, it's a trail shoe still. It's, oh. a, it's totally a competent trail shoe. And I will say the the rubber compound in the sole is grippy as all get out. It's awesome. But is it Michelin grippy? We will find out. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Wow. Good so, segue, bro. Thank so, you. Well, what are well, we here to talk about? Yeah, I'm well, learning from Chip the segues. Might- Hold on, Chris though. has a, a first impression. Oh, gosh. It's all about Chris. All I right. Know. Back to Chris. Um, so last weekend, I used the Arc Sports Vig suit for the first time that I ordered while inebriated about a month before it arrived. <laughs> uh, free shipping, I guess, is 20% off and free shipping is par- apparently all, all that it takes at 1130 <laughs> at night. Um, I loved it. I mean, he was... Just, like, end of pumped. sentence. Like, I used to give Chipper shit for using his Orno. I'm like, dude, you're going to mess it up. Like, why are you doing that? It's a race suit. We just talked about this on the show exclusively, mm-hmm. <laughs> extensively, I mean. And now I get it. I totally get it. So, so Annie, I, t- I totally understand. Like, I'd be using the thing all the time. Why wouldn't you use it, right? It's great. Yeah. I mean, and this one is, is, is super thin. It almost feels like and fits like a swim skin. That you'd wear for you know a triathlon swim or something That's like that. That's not wetsuit legal. And this also yeah. has the running plus plus. Yep. Ooh. How is it different? Well, it's a little bit thinner than the running plus, and it feels like it's a little. Um, it's a little bit of like, a different like, material. Like like the weave feels tighter. Yeah. So maybe less like water or more water resistant, so, less yeah. water absorbent. When Chris was getting out of the water, he literally had you know from his his giant quarantine locks that he has water dripping off and it was literally rolling off the back of the suit like beating down beating yeah. off yeah yeah so the whole back of the suit the the shoulders and arms and all the the, the legs like the belly button down is all that running plus plus so it's just super minimal the only um neoprene which is really thin is in the chest the zipper is the same it's, it's the, the same zipper as uh <laughs> as, 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 as all the other was as as the uto i think because it's it's a much smaller ykk gauge. four whatever yeah. as opposed to the thicker yeah gauge but ones. you know swimming in relatively cold water 
Yeah, I was going to say, you guys, it's pretty cold up there. Yeah, I it would, was fine. Down there. I would say it was probably high 50s, maybe 57, yeah. 58. And how long were you uh, in the water for? Um, like, what well, were your distances kind of? Well, we didn't do that much swimming because I was doing this other stupid thing, um, some <laughs> challenge, so I didn't want to, like, blow myself out on swimming. Um, but uh, just went for about a K. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, with or yeah, without sleeves? No sleeves. It didn't come with sleeves, so you'd have to buy those separately. Did have a little pocket in the, in the back. I think it's the same pocket that the Udo has mm-hmm. in terms of style. And I I was comparing the construction on the seams because cause like Annie, you know, when we were talking about the Orno, the Vig seems to have a much better construction. Yeah. Like the <laughs> seams are better. I don't know if the, it's because the material is different or mm. Arc has used a different um, manufacturer or something that has mm-hmm. higher quality control. I don't know why, but the seams looked a lot better. And so that leads me to believe that maybe they've adjusted some stuff or the suit that we got was, you know, it was a pre-owned suit. So it could have been used once. It could have been used 10 times. But <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah. But it's like, I mean, I, I want to wear that thing a lot. It's it's pretty delicate. I mean, when the box came, I literally Are you wearing thought, it right now? Uh, no. It's, it's, okay. it's too hot for that presently. Um, but but when the box came, I was like, I can't believe I waited like three weeks for this thing to arrive and the box is empty. <laughs> so it was so light. Oh. Um, and then, then, then I shook it and it felt like there was something in there. So I was like, oh, I see what's happening here. Um, but yeah, I really loved it. Going to keep using it hmm. while the weather cooperates. Um, the, the neck seal was awesome. So didn't get any water inside the suit. Um, it's definitely, on, I usually wear a medium and it's definitely on the slimmer sort of cut. Um, so I don't know if I could Euros, wear it post, Euro sizing. post COVID, um, you know, if I start gaining the weight back or whatever, but yeah, but for right now it's awesome. So I'm really enjoying it. And I feel like my mind is going to be blown the first time I wear an arc suit after I've been wearing my Orca for well, three years. Well, that's basically is, what yeah. happened to me. That's, that's. That's my experience. Like the second I, I wore it, I stopped. I apologized to Chipper for giving him shit <laughs> for telling him not to wear his suit. I was like, I get it. I'll never, I'll never mention it again. I'll never tell you to do things again. <laughs> so now well, I'm gonna I hold that over. I'm definitely not gonna go that far. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's not get crazy here. Well, all right. Let's Any other this. updates? I don't think so. I think we're good to go. All right, Annie. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what it is we're reviewing today? This shoe, The Tempest by Vivo Barefoot, marketed as the best swimmer and shoe on the planet, is a generation two of Vivo Barefoot's swim run specific shoe. Uh, generation one was called the Primus Swim Run Boot. And it looks like some updates that have been made are the there's an ankle cuff, like a gaiter, that's designed to keep debris out. And that looks like it's been updated for sort of more of a streamlined fit. Um, and then the materials of the shoe have really changed. So the original version was kind of your standard fair athletic shoe materials. And then the Tempest is has a real angle towards sustainability. It's an, the upper is made from a sustainable EVO, EVA foam alternative that's actually made from algae. And yeah, I also, think this thing like grows on coral. It's, it's amazing. Like, it, it's harvested I was from the ocean. Thinking, about how the, you know, so much of the ethic of swim run and the, um, the messaging of Otillo and of Vivo Barefoot is to run with nature and you truly have nature on your foot um, with this shoe. Um, it runs $220 US and something cool that I just noted when I checked out their website is that it is a pretty specific and specialized shoe might not work for everybody, but you have an opportunity to do a 100 day trial yes. during which if it doesn't work for you, you can send it right back. So that those are kind of the specs, but we've got, but let's hear from the people who testing. use these shoes. So we always start with the swim. So we thought, even though it's a running shoe, we thought we'd just keep the format the same and hear about your all's thoughts on swimming with this shoe. Yeah. For sure, I'll kick it off. And we do. We just did what we did want to disclose that Vivo Barefoot actually sent us these pairs. So they sent 
Chris and I each a pair. So keep that in mind when they give the pull buoy rating. Yeah, they didn't have to knock it down <laughs> half a pull buoy to get exactly what they think. No. They didn't, uh, you know, it was just they gave us the shoes. There was no ask to do a review or, or anything like that or give a positive rating. So this is our, our kind of genuine uh, feelings on it. Um, as far as a swim, I would say this shoe, it's it's a not – I didn't even notice it when I was swimming, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, as, as much – the greatest compliment you can give it is that it was such a non-issue. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's it, nothing to talk about. If it, it, it just helped, I guess it even potentially even helps that you didn't have to think about it. So your your brain, that brain power that's worrying some, you know, a little microscopic a, amount about your shoes for some reason, that was not even there. Like my mind was free. Yeah, wow. As I was, uh, uh, you know, slogging through the water. It didn't help you swim straight, though. No, it didn't. Um, <laughs> and then f- they have two colors, actually. They have an orange one and a black one, and, and Chris and I actually swapped pairs. Right, so, which you'll find out later in the show why that was a an huge mistake. Interesting twist. It's a huge mistake. But they, yes. both, <laughs> they both have orange soles, is that right? Like They both have orange soles. soles, yes. They're a little bit different color. The one with the black upper, the orange sole is a little bit orangier. Well, and the other one is more obsidian. algae. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like yeah, or, or the, coral, more corally. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's more salmon-y. Salmony orange or something? It, it sticks out a little bit for sure. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, on the swim, absolutely, absolutely no issue yeah. whatsoever. Yep. I and agree. Good. Awesome. It's, it's a great shoe yeah. for swim. Good. Cool. And how about, um, so you're coming out of the swim. The big question here is drainage when we think about swim run shoes. So I mean, what did you guys notice in transition? It was pretty awesome. It, uh, you know, it has this upper, which – I, I thought it was going to be a little bit tighter, like more more of a gator than it was. It just it was just kind of like a little like chuck a boot for me. Maybe I got like super hmm. skinny ankles. Yeah, or something. you need to get some chubby ankles. Or um, something. Is there is there so a way to ankles. adjust it? There isn't. No, it's it is just like yeah, sock. it doesn't. Yeah, it's kind of like a sock, and yeah. it, but it's Did knitted. It? It's knit. Yeah, it's all it's, like one piece. Yeah, upper. it's one piece upper. But it wasn't tight. But uh, but yeah, so I. Maybe I got a little bit of stuff in there running on beach, but oh really? It wasn't too bad. It wasn't anything where I was like, oh, I need to do like a pit stop here. Yeah. Um. And the shoe, we w- I I will note it is not quick on to put on. Like it's kind of one of these things like you got to sit down and you know you got to go to work a little bit to get this thing on because the ankle collar with that kind of sock upper, mm-hmm. uh, gator type thing is is kind of tough to to get it in there. Um, but on transitions, I didn't really, I wasn't getting any debris in and water. I mean, there's no place to go except out in the shoe because the entire shoe is drainage. Mesh. Mesh. Um, except for the heel where the material's a little bit. Yeah. I'm looking so, at the heel though, and it looks like it has drainage holes. Oh, that's even just, in the that's just heel. an aesthetic. That's for aesthetic. Oh, oh really? really? Yeah. Yes. Those so, don't go huh. all the way through. Huh. No. So we did actually have a, a listener email us with that exact question about, hey, are my holes, is this a, like a defect that the holes don't drain? Yeah. Or is that just for it is? And that kind of got Chris and I looking at both of them. And yeah, I mean, it's for aesthetic. I think it's a little bit, because you the holes are big enough to where definitely sand and, go, and rocks could, could go in. in so. Yeah. It might. You know what any, they need to do? They need to bring it all the way through. And then you just have like a one-way valve. You know, that where water crazy. can go wow. out, and then like any pressure closes it. Wow! Wow! That's well, the next we'll take we'll put note. you in, well, we'll, we'll, in contact with Asher <laughs> Clark. Yeah, Asher Clark. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, if you want to hear the full interview with Asher oh, Clark, yeah. it's episode oh, twenty-three yes. of the podcast. Hear their entire R and D process, and <laughs> yeah. um, talked about surfing, surfing, and all yeah, sorts that was of a stuff. Good interview. But yeah, I mean, I had no issues. There, there is lugs on the bottom, so getting out. We, yeah, we, we, we actually did a, went out in a couple different types of terrain. So it was rocky. It was like super low disgusting. Tide, actually. Low okay, so you can just do your your stuff. smooth beach, your smooth nope. beach no. transition. We, so, okay, I would think you guys would thrive at low tide. Well, <laughs> well, we thought so too. Yeah, until this, we was, this was too low. It. It's too, too low. low. We, the too low. That's, tide that's the yeah. that's the new yeah that's the yeah. new name swim run team. The too low tide boys. Yeah, yeah we. Uh, 
we were in some gunk up to pretty much our knees. Um, some really gnarly, you know, yeah, low seed tide stuff. seed. Well, and gunk. what's good about that is I bet because I was in, we were in some gunk up to our knees on our swim run a few weeks ago, and I was wearing my my um, my Innovates and. They were almost going to come off in the gun. Yeah. How did wow. you feel about so the security well, of that tempest? So the shoe felt secure, no and interestingly, um, when we got out of the water, uh, our socks were full of like, I don't know, this fish weird mud. shit and yeah. all this stuff. But <laughs> the shoes didn't didn't collect. It just basically just it filtered just, yeah, it out. Came kind right of. out. Wait. Do you, oh yeah. Of course, you guys wore socks with the shoe. Okay. Yeah. We, yeah. we wore socks, and um, they have. A it almost night- looks like this shoe. You wouldn't need to wear a sock. Like it looks like it's just one smooth. Well, I have. Piece. I have a look. My my main critique about the shoe. Well, are we going to go to the run? No. Well, I, well we're I, not even I, done oh, with sorry. transition yeah. yet. Oh my yeah. god! I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll I'll save the critique for running. So transition. The only thing I want to know is, did you do the bucket test? Ooh, good oh. question. Okay, I did do the bucket test. Now, what? Now, wait, did you before, do it correctly? Chip? Before, before, so I think so. So, so Chipper okay. took this seriously. Like he's a student, and you guys are like the chemistry professors. <laughs> like, and you're going to grade him on it. Yeah, but, we are. He here was tell us your method. We're not only going to grade him on it. We're going to judge you. <laughs> I was, t- I was telling my daughter that uh, Dad's doing some science, so <laughs> stay can out. You, can you help, please? <laughs> oh, okay. So here was my scientific method. I took a dry weight of each shoe in grams. Then I soaked in a hydro flask waterproof thing for 20 minutes. The shoes nice. soaked. Which is, which is about like a swim rat, like a Yeah, swim that's the swim distance. length. Okay. Then I took the shoes out of the water and put them right onto the scale. And then from the scale, I weighed each one and then... I let that air dry in 106 degree heat here in Novato <laughs> for two minutes, and then I re I reweighed them. Rock on! I am not going to negatively judge that at all. No, Keep your methods doing are science. Sound. Your methods Super sound. are sound. Wow. Okay. So, what'd you find out? So, what I found out, and I this took me by surprise to start. So, I actually did two weight measurements for the dry. The orange version of the shoe weighs five grams more than the black version what yeah so going back to my thing we were screwing up like we were probably running a little bit to the left yeah i kept swinging in circles that's <laughs> yeah. oh you guys switch shoes meaning yeah. like so we each one had... wore because you have the you same did size. it like yeah. like yeah, crisscross oh that's yeah because so we're the same size so we're like oh this will yeah, be funny that's really cute <laughs> That's what we. That's why we did it. We, we try to be cute. That's that's, um, that's our thing. And but you also, might develop a stronger leg. Exactly. Yeah. It's like Ooh. if you only run on the track in one direction. Kind Is of that thing. why Chip was swimming crooked? It Maybe. Could, very. Very. I would like to pinpoint. Let's just that. say that's why. Just, I think that's crooked. a good scapegoat. Yeah. So the black version for a size men's eleven. Or for uh, our European fans, that is a forty-four. That the right the black version weighs three hundred and thirty-seven grams per shoe, and the left or my left shoe, which is the orange version, weighed three hundred and forty-two <laughs> grams, so five grams heavier. Maybe it's the the dye. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I I was like, oh, is my scale? Did I not tear it out or something? And I went and I reweighed both twice, and I got the same oh. difference. Um, so That's after the 20 minutes soak, which actually I had, uh, these shoes do float. Oh. I did notice. Oh, awesome. So there was some floating. They kind of, you know, bubbled up like you were bobbing for apples. So I kind of kept them weighted down. Uh, after the soak, I just picked them up out and I took them over to the scale, like t- a couple feet away. And, um, the right one previously was weighing dry weight, 337. It came out. After the soak at 423. Ooh. And then the left came out at 426. And that's without any dry time. That's with no dry time. Just picked that's them right amazing. out of the water. And, and so you know what's there. interesting is the um, you guys know the world of Swim Run, and they do their, their shoe review yep. uh-huh. and in 2019. And the Saucony won the um, lowest water retention. But it gained 130 grams wow. of water wow. after they let it. Um, they ran in it for three minutes. 
Whoa. So not so immediately this, after oh, they exited talking. the water. This was after they. So so what what was the weight chipper after? Oh, let me you do let the, let me do the quick math. So it gained it's 80, already... 86 grams. So it, 86, it kind of blows yeah. the Sockney out of the water. I mean, yeah. it's then, less than the Sockney. Or it blows the yeah. water out of the Sockney. Whoa. And then nice. once you let it sit, once you let it sit for a couple minutes in like the, you know, surface of the sun that was Novato earlier today. Um, <laughs> Which is three ounces, by the way. So it gained three ounces. What was the weight? Because it, having it sit in the sun is probably the yeah. equivalent to running a mile. Like running in it for a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So it the the right one, which was the lightest of so the black color. Uh, went from th- uh, 423 to 394. Wow. So, so uh, less than almost, 60. Yeah. And then ver- a similar, actually, the, the orange one retained a little bit more. It went from 426 to 415, so it only lost 10 grams. Uh, wow, that's the, the orange so interesting. one. I, I really yeah. want to know more about so that. Pro but tip. What we're hearing. Get the exact pair. Of shoes. Yeah, is get the black one. Yeah. I know, but yeah, I really like the one. coral. I, it, gets, it depends what your priorities are. Like, are you going to totally. win yeah. the race or are you going to look the best? You know? Right. And at the end of the day, we're talking, you know, you could probably take a really good poop that morning of and then that makes up good. for all those. Grams. And yeah, you're good too. <laughs> or yeah, just don't have a donut once a week or something. You're probably good. I'm feeling them now. I mean, they're wet, but I mean, I don't, I, I can't think of designing a shoe that could possibly drain better. I mean, yeah, unless you put holes like. in the bottom of it, which doesn't make any sense because this is already a minimalist barefoot style shoe. Mm-hmm. I, the, I don't see how you can even design it. To, well, when you're designing an upper that is literally made out of algae that comes from the sea yeah. and does not absorb water, it makes yeah. sense, right? Like it's really kind of brilliant. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it's 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 a good looking shoe. I think, um, you know, the 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 coral color is. I mean, I really like it. I think a lot of people are. That's probably like the polarizing color. You either love mm-hmm. it or you hate it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 a it's it's a pretty incredible shoe for what it is. I mean, we haven't talked about running yet, which is. I well, think, for, for transition, well, wait, 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 for transition, I wanted to ask about um, the Michelin grip. You guys tried it oh, on yeah. some rocky stuff. Oh, it was great. It yeah, was great. Ha- had no issues pretty with sticky. that. Pretty, pretty grippy. I wouldn't. It was like beach. We did asphalt. We did like sloppy rocks. We did trails. Um, cable car tracks. <laughs> cable car tracks. <laughs> um, that's, yeah. That's yeah. legit. Nice. All right, in let's case, talk about in run. In case you guys don't know, the shoe is made at the sole is like a Michelin style. It's like a special formula that they came yeah, up with. So yeah. listen to that Low Tide Boys episode 23, Chris. Yep. And wow. um, you can get a down low on that specific grip, but it's like one of a kind. You're vying yeah. for a for a full time hosting job, I see. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, trying. I'm so, really trying. So I'm gonna go on vacation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm hey, just... Hey, comp- Chris, before you go on vacation, can we talk... I just really want to talk about the run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, is run. <laughs> it is a running shoe. It is a running shoe. So, uh, so I, think, I think there's a huge caveat on this. So the shoe is super minimal. So if our tests were sort of limited by the fact that we both run... Chipper usually runs in hokas or sort of maximal cushioning shoes. I run in all kinds of stuff, but not minimal so i'll run in regular shoes all the way up to hokas um so it does take some getting used to it's essentially zero drop super wide toe kind of like ultra style to kind of make it you know be as natural as possible so if you're not used to that it does take some getting used to and I, i mean we definitely weren't we probably put like 15 miles in these things and after the 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 longest run we did, I think, was like a 5K or was four or five miles. Four or five miles, right. And, um, I mean, my calves were the next day. Woo. So Deep you on ran five. on that day. No run segment was longer than 5K, but you ran a total of 15 miles? Uh, no. Well, I'm trying to think. So, no, that, that first we one. We wore this for a couple different swim yeah, runs. The first one, I think, was like eight miles total, nine miles total. Yeah. And then the second one, I think, was about eight or nine as well. But yeah. that that was that that one was in the city, so we actually were running on roads with on pavement with the shoes was mm-hmm. 
Had you done any of the kind of recommended graded exposure to that minimalist footwear? Nope. <laughs> wow. I I didn't say that's that. Chris. <laughs> that is Chris speaking. Chipper, uh, you know, Vivo Barefoot has an entire plan or like program that they kind of recommend. Mm-hmm. And I actually, out of curiosity, kind of signed up for it and, and got got the, you know, the manual or the kit for it. Nice. Um, and, and the recommendation is to kind of just start by walking barefoot around your house, mm-hmm. which, you know, as we're been home from quarantine for five or six months, I have been pretty much living barefoot with the exception of, you know, my target runs uh, a couple times a week when I'm wearing, you know, my, my uh, sandals or whatever. So I, I feel that I do, I am barefoot a lot of hours during mm-hmm. the day um, for, for a while. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm a bigger person as well. I'm uh, close to six, about six foot, probably weighing at like 215, 220. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, gravity and other things happening <laughs> on my feet. But I didn't really feel any negative effects from a, you know, cheat, not cheat sheet, like a crib notes uh, mm. studying version of the, the the plan to run barefoot sort of thing. I didn't really have any soreness problems, but with Chris's caveat, I am not ready to commit at this time to a fully barefoot thing and throw all my quote unquote normal shoes out and go, go, go barefoot. Would you, would you race in them? I think I would, um, depending on the race. Now I think for that California swim run in San Diego that Andy Hewitt pits on, that's an hour and a half, two hours totally could do that. And I think they would excel Obviously, mm-hmm. they would excel at that. Um, we ran on some trails up in China Camp when we did the low tide swim run. And actually, Chris got a hot spot yeah. on your, what was it? On the black shoe. On the black shoe. And then on my black shoe, I also got a hot spot in the same area. Where was oh. that? It was right like outside my pinky toe. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so that, that was really annoying. And it was so annoying that at one point I was like, I'm just going to head back because this is really pissing me off. Um, and Have you like ever gotten step- a, a hot spot there before in other shoes? Nope. Like, is it something with your running nope. gait? No? I, I mean, I think it's because the show, the shoe has such little structure in the upper that it was just wherever it was creasing, it was just happened the way I run or whatever. It just happened to be creasing in that uh, spot yeah. that was kind of that was kind of hitting me right right in the toe. So maybe it's just the way I do my thing or whatever, but So it was like on the top part of your toe, not like laterally. Yeah. It was like yeah. okay. I yeah. Mean, you can it, literally fold these. I have these shoes folded up in third. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I mean you and can, it's, it's, and it, it was yeah. I mean it was it was definitely uh about to bleed kind of thing by the time we were done. Mm. The next swim run, I just put you know Frozen 2 Band-Aid uh, uh, Olaf or Kristoff? <laughs> I think it was an Olaf okay. and an Anna. They're good. The Anna. Olafs okay. are good. I highly recommend the Olafs. Yeah. Um, on he both hugs. On both pinky toes. Warm hugs. Okay. Um, on both pinky toes. And then it was not a problem. But I'm not, you know, that shouldn't be, you shouldn't have to do that to go on a yeah, hour and a half. Yeah, but not, not on the orange one. So maybe that, what, five grams is worth? I don't know. No, it made no the black ones are, were lighter. But the black ones. I know, but the black you ones gave you hot yeah. spots. Yeah, which that was interesting when he's like, "Oh my toe." I'm like, "Oh, mine's kind of too." And then we like put our feet together. <laughs> Is this about the fact that you guys have one brain or had one <laughs> pair of shoes split? The two I don't of know. You? It well, might be clearly the brain thing wasn't working out for us. Um, <laughs> yeah, so 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 that happened. So that was that was annoying. Again, it was it was mitigated by putting on, you know, band aids. Um, but that's not a long term, tr- long term solution. Yeah. Quick question about that because um, it is interesting that you guys got it both with the same shoe, you know, on opposite feet. Um, is do you guys have one foot that's bigger than the other? No. And was that on your bigger foot? You know, most people have asymmetric. Like you guys don't. Most people have like know. one foot that's slightly. It doesn't bigger seem. Than another. If it is, it's not noticeable to me. Uh, I'm just putting shoes. my feet okay. together right now. I can't tell. <laughs> Science <laughs> method <laughs> fail. <laughs> Let me get my protractor. There you go. Thanks, Chip. Yeah. Thanks for Wait, protractor. Chip. 
So you got no calf soreness from your journey? I also repeats? got calf soreness. Oh, you did? On okay. the hill repeats. That yeah, could have been because I'm sense. my calves are way out of shape for hills. Uh, but we did, that was kind of actually on a little, was that on the actual workout or was it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it was two hours of it was a lot just of going up hills, like steep gradient hills. So yeah, I, think, I was expecting some soreness. Yeah, so I'm if, not If you totally hadn't been doing a ton to, of hills, there was going to be some calf soreness, I think. Just yeah. So still that still might not be up. the minimalist shoe at fault. That the, yeah, yeah. I'm not but, totally prepared. To but, I, but, I, but I had calf soreness after the first run. The first oh, time okay. we used it. So I think it's just like a minimalist shoe thing. And it just totally the way, is. And just the way so I it changes your gait so that you have to attenuate Use force your yep. more oh. through your calf, foot, and mm-hmm. ankle. Mm-hmm. And that can be such a doozy on people's calves. So mm-hmm. I, I'm such a wow. nag. But as injury risk reduction measures, like take this shoe almost i i haven't worn it but i have worn other minimalist footwear and i think it's safe to just consider training in minimalist footwear is its own sport that you have to train for gotcha yeah i think that's yeah. fair i think vivo barefoot would also agree with you because yeah, yeah i was going to ask you chip what was your what was the preparation that they sent you like what duration yeah, so what kind of stuff did they it was resources for for 30 minutes a day kind of just walk around barefooted which i was like okay i'm doing no that problem. for 8 or eight 9 hours, hours. <laughs> mm-hmm. um and then it was go for a walk in the shoes which I actually my wife and i went for a walk one night and i wore them for like a mile to kind of break them in just on a little walk around the neighborhood. A walkabout. A walkabout. And then um, we did a little run. It kind of recommended like a, you know, start at 10 or 15 minute increments of running or exercise. And then after three days, if the soreness goes away, then you can start kind of ratcheting that up. Um, That was sort of how, how they planned it. So like keep your, don't, don't increase volume for after until you until the soreness isn't there. Um, so keep your keep your workouts to the same time limit, and then once you don't have soreness after a day or two of doing that workout, then you can kind of start to 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 ratchet up. But it honestly didn't seem it seemed within three weeks to a month that you can be training fully in in the shoe, um, you know, without having to worry about quote unquote transitioning into the barefoot style. And did you, were you doing it for like a week before you? Yeah, pretty much kind of like a week before. And then we did another, we did a shorter swim run with them on um, that, you know, maybe had five or six miles of running as opposed to nine or 10, the couple weeks when we did it back to back. Um, So I felt I was a little bit more transitioned into that style of running than Chris. But again, I'm not kind of like, I don't know. I just don't feel the pull of the of the barefoot. Yeah. You know, I don't know yeah. what to call it, but you're not just going to be a come a full convert. The minimalist yeah. movement. Yeah. The movement. That's true. A- Annie, what would you say about you know the the research you did about um, the lowest hanging fruit for running injury prevention being rotating between two or three different pairs of shoes or different styles of shoes? Could this be something you think that you included in your training rotation? Um, or do you have to be, as you said, like a minimalist sport enthusiast, you know, to really learn how to run in a shoe like this? I think whatever calls to you would both would be a great approach. I, I would advocate for actually not ever becoming a full convert, always having some hmm. footwear in your rotation that provides a slightly different training stimulus, a different challenge to the muscles of the foot and ankle, or even the variability the factor for them. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think just, yeah. And what Brooke's referencing is, is something we talked about in the shoe down, which is just that a really easy thing you can do to reduce risk of injury is to rotate between two or more models of running shoe. And if you have something that's, that's really different from your typical go-to training shoe, like you guys with your Hoka's, this is a great one to have in a rotation. Maybe never, maybe you never convert, but if you have it in the rotation, it has the possibility to reduce injury risk pretty significantly yeah i mean i totally see that i mean i i I see myself i don't see myself maybe we save this for the final thing but i don't see myself racing in uh in them but i do see myself using them in training like if we're doing Mm -hmm. like a swim heavy swim run Mm -hmm. um 
I mean, they would be ideal. It's just if it's going to be a significant amount of running, I definitely, I wouldn't feel super confident. What so if who would you, oh, sorry, Chip. Oh, I was just going to say, what if we were focusing like on speed work on the run where you want a kind of a quicker turnover or would you want to rely more on the shoe that you would race in for the, the fast running? I don't think so. I think if we were doing like a transition practice where we were just trying to like, you know, run the beach kind Get of some thing. Reps in. Um, mm-hmm. I think it'd be perfect for that. Like I already kind of run on my toes. So I, I don't, I think it's just, I don't know, the, the getting the blister kind of turned me off, but you know, that's just me. Hmm. Who, um, who do you think this, what kind of swim runner do you think this shoe is for? Or is it just individual running preference? I mean, it looks like a lot of the top folks are running in these things. So I think I if you're trying to get to that level, they're, you know, it's yeah. obviously working for them, right? Yeah, if you are ready to kind of commit to at least a partial barefoot running or you are already in that camp and you just are looking for the marginal gains of not having a shoe that's holding a ton of water, that's really fast, that you don't have to worry about debris or any sand or whatever getting in there, I think that this is probably the the like elite pro upper upper tier kind of swim runner that's who it's for of like you fast need, and light yeah fast and light very that's like i love that or could you argue that it's maybe for the swim runner like me who already running in kind of a more minimalist shoe but is not a great runner and anything could help <laughs> that, you just want a shoe brick <laughs> i do want a new shoe i want to try the 100 day trial that's an awesome gig i mean if you if you are also bugged and you get really annoyed by, oh my God, my shoes are so soggy and you are, you're really struggling. Boggy, the bogginess factor. The bogginess yeah. factor. So if that is really a triggering thing for you or you just can't find the right shoe, obviously it doesn't get any better of a swim run shoe than this. The yeah. Tempest, in my yeah. Opinion. I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's, I don't think the shoe has an analogy with kind of like the Nike Vaporfly next percents or something Mm -hmm. like that where Mm -hmm. you're paying top dollar for something that's giving you potentially a huge advantage on a long run um i mean for the price point i mean it's 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 definitely a top shoe it's a spendy shoe it's a spendy shoe and if uh, i mean on the water you might as well just be barefoot i mean it feels so good right so it's just if you can run in them i mean it's an ideal shoe you guys feel like you've had them long enough to speak to durability? I would say no, but I, I'm kind of looking here. So I was, I've was i been closely examining this one, and this is the orange one. So, I mean, the upper is just all mesh, and it's, it's bound to happen that you're going to start punching holes in these things. Um, and then I all these little algae bits – on the sh- on the on the top of the shoe, the kind of like coral look, like the decorative, yeah, the decorative part. pieces. I don't well, see how these start don't start coming it, un- it also gives it structure, so I think it's oh, one it's of like the ways they keep it. Oh, right, yeah. Is a, uh, oh, that's like a really coral cage. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, I think the the durability test. We'll have to give an update on that in like a couple yeah, months or we'll something. Loop back. Um, but I could see getting some ripping yeah, in the crease. I could so, see that too. I'm wherever, already kind of looking there. I mean, I don't see any any ripping or tearing, but you know, I I'm kind of I'm purposely trying to get one of these little dots or little coral things to kind of lift up a little bit, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen, and we are you actively have... picking at it? Yeah, I was yeah. kind yeah kind of <laughs> to see. Stop! To see. It's a two hundred twenty dollars yeah, shoe. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like if you have a pimple on your face. You have, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> and you have to test. You have to like pass the bucket test and the. Pick test. Yeah, and the the popping test. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I could I could foresee. I mean, the shoe is extremely well crafted. There's no there's no doubt about that. But the materials that they're using are just so high drainage that I I just think there's no way it can't. It's yeah. not going to hold up for three hundred. It kind of sounds thing. like the arc wetsuits it's like the finer the material you get and the more techno technologically advanced you get with your materials like the more fragile it is yeah i was just gonna say that it seems like um 
I mean, and, and their commitment to having to be nature. And, 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 yeah. I mean, I think if you buried this shoe, it would just degrade. You know, I don't know. <laughs> no, <laughs> flowers would come up. Flowers would come yeah, up. Just flowers you don't, you don't feel it in the water because it's like dissolving on your <laughs> <Yeah>. foot. <laughs> it's like, it's like Alka Seltzer. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, it's happens? like fizzing. Provides a little motor for you. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So maybe you just have to find a balance between, uh, you know, are you going to do the high tech, super light, ultra light, non water absorbent material, you know, environmentally friendly materials versus durability? And that's where yeah. chemicals are yeah. great. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> anyway, we should probably, I, I pretty ready. I'm ready for You're to feeling skip, ready like, for your okay. major. So, yeah, pull buoy review. Ready. We got one to five pull buoys, just overall impressions. We're not doing any subcategories like we tried to pull on the last show. Right. Uh-huh. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> this okay. is just We're still one learning. and done. Um, Chris, you sound ready to ready He's to ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I mean, I I'm going to give this shoe four pull buoys kind of despite everything that I've said in the show because I mean, it is an amazing piece of technology. This is like this shoe was designed by people who are trying to make the greatest shoe for swim run. Mm-hmm. Like and the fact that someone decided that they wanted to do that for a sport that's really it's in its awesome. infancy is really awesome. So yeah. you get co- points for that. Where I'm taking points away is the fact that the break-in period might be problematic for people and the price. I mean, it's 220 bucks, super expensive. But in terms of like as a concept, as in execution and everything, again, minus the blister issue, which might have just been because I was wearing the black shoe and not the coral color shoe. Um I mean, it, it was it was a cool shoe. Right, that's a solid right endorsement. On. And I am going to say. And wait, can I just clarify? Yeah, Chris, you're not taking points off. You're taking pull buoys off. Pull buoys off, yes. Mm, thank you. We'll that's we'll correct that in post production. Okay. Yep. Uh, I am going to give this actually a uh, a four and a half, but this isn't the shoe for me. But it is the best swim run shoe that I have been exposed to. If if that's what you want and you want that top level, that race swim run shoe, I don't see how this gets any better. Yes, it's going to be more fra- fragile. Yes, it is expensive. I don't think I would have paid to. I would not have paid two hundred twenty for this. Um, I don't. I think the Evo Speed Goats that I use, the Hoka ones, those are like what one sixty. And I was kind of like a little gun shy on those, but I love those ones. So two twenty is that's next level shoe cost. Um, it's like so, the cost of some wetsuits. Yeah, yeah, like you can get it's more you can get a blue seventy wetsuit orca, for cheaper. Yeah, yeah, more expensive than a wetsuit. But if you if you're looking for the best swim run shoe there is, this is it. So I give it four and a half. Solid right on. Score. Yeah, I, I feel but, like th- this this review is interesting because there's a lot of caveats because there's a lot that goes into play, what, like what might work for someone and not other people. But I think if we're trying to be objective about the tech and sort of the materials and its purpose. I, I mean, I know, amazing. yeah, I know why it costs 220 yeah. because we talked to Asher who designed the shoe and we know that they're like working with Michelin to get one-off compounds for the thing and every, like all that is just ex- expensive and the R and D and everything like mm-hmm. that it is a work of art. Yeah. And, and I would say mission accomplished on the Vivo barefoot side. I mean, yeah. mm-hmm. trying to make the best swimmer and shoe. I mean, definitely. It's is. also just the first iteration of what they're calling their extreme survival collection. Yes. I was. So I'm curious, you know, we might see different things coming out in the future, more durability, more affordability. I think that this would also be a really great shoe for the the OCR, the obstacle course racing, the Spartan, the Tough Mudder folks. Mm -hmm. It's going to shed water. It's not going to get boggy. It's going to be fast. It has grips. You're not going to get shit in it. I mean, it it seems it's like kind of made for for that type of stuff. Yeah, definitely a fully amphibious shoe, which is, I guess, the Primus. That's kind of how that evolved as, a, as an amphibious shoe, and they just took it to the next level with this one. Good review, you guys. Where can we find you? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Low Tide Boys of the Zoo. <laughs> it's hilarious. So, yeah, thank you guys for hosting the yeah, show. Yeah, this was great. 
truly, I truly feel like I can go on vacation now. <laughs> yeah. Now that you've told us about the run performance, I will let you go on vacation. <laughs> Post show is going to be like, we're never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for you guys for trialing the shoes and um, hopefully we can uh, trial some more stuff in the future. Yeah. And don't forget anyone that's listening to reach out to us if there's gear that you want us to try. If we have it, we'll give our opinion on it. If we can try to get it, we'll give our opinion on it. And if you're a brand that wants us to give an honest review, reach out to us. Or Chris will just buy it at 11 o'clock at night. Yes. <laughs> hopefully not, though. <laughs> Buy me All one right. next time. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Gear Talk with the Swim Run Labs. You can learn more about all things Swim Run at swimrunlabs.com. If you have any questions or requests for us to review on the show, send us an email at lowtideboys with a Z at gmail.com. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening to this and your other podcast and leave a review if you're so inclined. We'd like to thank Writing Easy Records for our show music and, of course, Annie and Brooke for sharing their wealth of knowledge with us. We'd like to give a huge shout out to our wives for letting us do this sort of stuff. And until next time, be sure to go out there and go for a swim. And then a run. And then another swim. And then a run. Might as well throw another swim on there. And a run. And then just keep going. (laughs) Okay. Don't stop. Won't stop. Can't stop. Mm -hmm.